Normally with astrophotography, I would say don't bother when the moon's doing what it's doing right now. It's a full moon right now, but I'm going to do something that I've been waiting to do for a long time. Let me show you. You see, rather than run away from what the moon's doing right now, it's full. I'm gonna use that moon to light paint something that's just bloody huge. Over the back here is Suicide Rock. I'm using it as the subject for tonight's photo. I wanna push that subject up into the sky and have it align roughly with south here in the Southern Hemisphere to get some cool star trails. The phone we're using here tonight is the iPhone 14 Pro Max. Doesn't have to be that phone. Any iPhone will do what I'm about to show you how to do. Other phones do this sort of thing automatically as well. The Huawei phones, I've actually got a P40 Pro sitting over there on a tripod capturing time lapses by going into light trail mode and it's got a mode there for it. Push a button and it does it all automatically. But will the iPhone do it better with this app? It will. Regular viewers of this channel, you know that there's a number of apps that can do this on an iPhone. You've got uh, Nightcap app, Slow Shutter, M Moment reflex, re-expose, and even longer. They're just to name a few. There's quite a few apps that can do this. In my humble opinion, the app even longer for star trail photography is probably the easiest to use. It gives you probably the best results in raw photos with the colors that are in the stars. The others can do it and they can all do it really quite well. But it, we're pretty lucky to have that sort of variety I guess if you like uh, in the app world for this sort of photography. There are three aspects to this sort of photography, three stages if you like. One is setting up or composing the image, the second thing is setting up the app and the third is well editing the photo. Composition of these images is really quite straightforward. You've got two sorts of star trails. One you've got the curves uh, that shoot away from the poles of the earth and the second is when you're shooting towards the poles of the earth. So if you're in the northern hemisphere you're looking for the northern star. If you're in the southern hemisphere you're looking for south. Generally speaking if you point due north, due south, you're going to get those nice circular sort of star trails. The app that I use to help with this a lot is Photo Pills. Use Photo Pills. I put the camera on the tripod or the phone on the tripod open up photo pills that uses augmented reality to find that polar south and then I use my torch to light paint the subject that I'm shooting to get it all composed nicely in the photo and that's it as far as composition goes. What I'll generally do then is take a photo in, um, in the regular camera app just to see how it looks in, in that night mode photo. Another point on composition is the duration that you're going to shoot, because it kind of comes into play, I think, with composition. The minimum you want to shoot with star trial photography, in my opinion, is about 40 minutes. Anything less than 40 minutes, it just kind of looks, well, kind of fake and bad, and looks like you've just done it, done it wrong. More than 40 minutes is going to give you those nice star trails through the sky. What I'm shooting here tonight is two hours, you can go all night if you wanted to. Some of these apps will go for like 12 hour shots, but it's not like a regular 12 hour shot that you'd get with your DSLR. Setting up the app on this here with even longer is dead set simple. In the latest version that Mario has done for this app, it does all the settings because it's got three different sort of modes on this. You've got frame averaging for like daytime, uh, long exposure photography. You've got light trails for tr car traffic and light painting and stuff like that. And the one that we're using here today is star trail photography. And you, once you change that into that, all three of these modes, he set up a, a default automatic setting, if you like, to help combat the things that happen with the iPhone. Things like that magenta cast with raw photography and low light situations. He's done it and he's done it quite well. So we set this up. It's going to go to like a default of 640 ISO, which is like the sweet spot, if you like, for as dark as it is here with that little bit of light pollution. Because it's got the image preview on this camera, on this app, it's going to show you if it's going to give you that magenta cast regardless if it's, um, if it's, if it's set right or not. So I've set that up, go into the gear icon at the top there and change to the duration that you want to change it. Save it to the intervals if you want to. And the last thing there is setting to focusing. For my camera here, for the iPhone 14 Pro Max, I know that 0.82 is going to give me pretty much pin sharp stars in the photo. And that's it. We hit the button, we go away and wait for it to be done. I like to keep an eye on these things as they go with the app on even longer because you can save in intervals on this, on this app. It gives you a stack of photos at the end of it. 
Um, if something does happen, you can take that image out. You may end up with a dot in the star trails, as in it's not uh, consistent the whole way through, but it helps you save the photo that you've been there for two hours longer when you accidentally kick the tripod or something. One of the things that the Even Longer app does better than the other apps as well, besides the color in the stars, and that's just my opinion, like you guys feel free to tell me yours, is that it tends to remove aeroplanes, satellites, shooting stars better by default than any other app I've seen. Most of them don't even bother with dealing with it. In fact, what I've got over there right now is that P40 Pro shooting right next to the iPhone 14 Pro Max. And already in the preview on both of these, they should be identical, but they're not. There are that many planes and shooting stars and satellites moving through the Huawei image versus the even longer image. There's, well, there's nothing there that I can see yet. And how many stars and planes can I see on the Huawei here? I've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. There's, there's probably about 20 odd different shooting stars, satellites, planes, that sort of thing that's on the Huawei phone right now. And don't get me wrong, this, is, this does a bloody good job. Like, what an age to be alive when you can take this sort of photo from a freaking phone. But on the even longer app, I'll have a look over here. I can see all the star trails, see the foreground. It's working quite well. And I can see a total of zero, absolute none, zip, nutter of planes, satellites, and etc. in that image there. What he's done with that algorithms on that particular app, it just works incredible. There's no, no planes, no stars, no shooting stars, nothing. It's just, it's mint. While we're waiting for that, it's about 15 to 20 minutes to go. It's not that much longer now. I'm almost at the bottom of my coffee, so hopefully it's not that much longer. I'll tell you about our second channel. It's all about uh, farming here on our small little dairy goat farm here in Australia. If you want to know more about that, like what we do on the farm, how we live on the farm, life in rural Victoria, Australia, how we make money on our farm, head over there, give us a like, a subscribe, and uh, you'll see what we do each and every week. Hopefully this is done soon. I'll get out, get back to the studio, and show you how to edit this photo. Over the course of that two hours, it took 490 odd photos. It took a photo and it saved it every 10, 15 seconds. I think I had the interim saving it. So it saved a photo every 15 seconds. So if something happened, a plane flying over or, or something happened that it didn't automatically get rid of, I can get rid of it myself. But the end result is that it gives you all these other photos, but it also gives you the final image. And the final image is what we're going to edit here. The way this app works, and I may not have covered it really well before, is that that one second duration of the shutter speed is taking a photo every second. Every second. And it's merging them all together. And every 15 seconds, it's saving that, and then saving that, and then saving that. And the end of the whole process, it saves this image right here. So what we've got here is that final image in Adobe uh, Lightroom Mobile. And there's really not much to do to this. I'm just going to bring this back. I was having a bit of a play with it before I hit record. This is the photo at import, and, and there's really not that much to do to it. I'm going to scroll up, and you can see, zoom in on the stars there. You can see some good color, and that's what I really like about this app. All I really want to do to this is add some contrast. I'm going to do that by <clears throat> increasing the whites and decreasing the blacks, and that's it. I don't need to change anything else on this photo. When I zoom right in, there's a little bit of a start, a, 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 an aeroplane line there that you can see very, very, very faint. It's almost gotten rid of it all by itself, but when you zoom out and look at that image, you don't see any at all. That's really it. There's really nothing else to do to that. I'm going to export that, save it to the camera roll, and that photo is done. The other thing that this uh, app will do for you is that all those images that are saved every 15 seconds, you can bring all those together put them into something like Final Cut Pro, which is what I use to edit all these photo, all, all these videos on YouTube, bring them all in, use them as single frames and build a, like a time-lapse sort of a build of a star trail image right there with all those frames. And it works really effective, just like this. Anyway, guys, that's it for today. I'll catch you later.